Welcome back to my Strapi series. So far, we've only retrieved data using the RESTful API of Strapi. In this video, we'll take a look at the Strapi GraphQL plugin, which will allow us to retrieve and mutate data using the alternative graph query language. All right, let's start by talking a little bit about GraphQL and what it is. GraphQL is a query language for your API. It runs as a runtime on your server, it parses GraphQL queries which you pass to your API, and it returns data based on your query and the structure and fields you requested. The GraphQL runtime is aware of your data because you have to define types for your data and its structure. Let's illustrate that with a simple query. Here on the left is the GraphQL query I'm sending to my GraphQL enabled server API. I request the books type, which is defined in GraphQL, and GraphQL is aware of the fields that books has. I also have a books entity in my database and it has three records. From this entity with the GraphQL query, as you can see, I request ID and title and author, which are under attributes in the hierarchy of fields, which I have defined in GraphQL. On the right is the JSON response returned by the API. I get the exact structure which I requested to GraphQL and only the fields I requested. For example, if I remove author from my GraphQL query request, I will not receive the author field. So that's pretty powerful in the sense that you can get only the data you want in the structure you want it. Of course, GraphQL is based on three fundamentals and you can also make mutations in addition to queries, meaning you, you can not only retrieve data, but also create the basic crude operations. You can create new entities, uh, create new records. You can modify records and delete records. To do that, GraphQL is based on three fundamental principles in order to enable this query language retrieval and mutation of data. The first fundamental is that you have to define types. This means that in GraphQL, every entity you have in your database, like in this example, books, you have to define a books type and all of the fields that go in books. Additionally, you also have to specify the types for each field. In this practical tutorial, we're using Strapi's GraphQL plugin, which actually will define the types for you. And you don't need to do that because you're already defining your content types, collections, single types in Strapi. And Strapi has that information. It will automatically generate the GraphQL types you need. Queries are the GraphQL retrieval queries where you request data with the query language of GraphQL and you receive the structured data. You can retrieve a single item. You can retrieve a collection of items. And lastly, as I mentioned, GraphQL also supports mutations, which means you can create records in your database. You can modify records and you can delete them. The basic root operations are completely supported. It's meant to replace the RESTful API in its, entirely, in, in its entirety by simplifying it with the query language. This of course comes at some costs, related to performance, security, etc. All right, so we talked a little bit about GraphQL. This wasn't a comprehensive introduction to GraphQL. I might make such a video. In this video, we'll focus on Strapi's GraphQL capabilities. And for that, I'll start with a demo where we install the GraphQL plugin, and then I'll show you the usage of GraphQL and how you can make queries and mutations, meaning all of the basic CRUD operations on a Strapi collection type. To do that, right here, I have prepared a Strapi install. This is a Strapi quick start with an SQLite database. The only modification I've done before the video in order to save time is I have created a collection type product so that we have a collection to demo on. And that collection type has a title and price fields. One is text, one is a number. I added three items to this collection, laptop, smartphone, smartwatch with three basic prices. This is everything I've done. Otherwise, this is a clean, brand new Strapi instance. So to start, I will actually open the Strapi documentation. You can also use it as reference. We have the GraphQL API article. Let me switch to, drag, the, to dark mode, which also links to the GraphQL plugin article in the docs. Both are useful. The GraphQL plugin explains the plugin 
installation and settings, it documents them, and the other article explains the entities, operations, etc. I'll use this article as reference and it will be linked in the video description. So to start, we have to go to the plugin documentation and install the GraphQL plugin. We use the strapi install command and it's available for yarn and npm. Basically, we run npm run strapi install GraphQL. I'll do that. This is my terminal where I run my uh, strapi instance. I will stop it and I will run the npm run strapi install GraphQL command. All right. So this just installed. Let me zoom in so that I can show you the effects. It installed the dependency and generated the GraphQL types, as you can see, for the collections you have already built. And after that, it automatically started the Strapi instance. So if I refresh now, Strapi should be running. And we can access our GraphQL playground. This is a graphical user interface where you can run queries from our endpoint, which is running on port 1337, GraphQL. And this opens the GraphQL playground right here. So now we will write GraphQL queries. Starting with the basics, let's retrieve some data. A GraphQL query can be named or not. This is an anonymous query. I can name it here, for example, retrieve products. In addition, I can not name it and I can even not write query at all at the root level for simplicity. Now I want to retrieve the products type which if I go to the content type builder has an API ID products with a lowercase p. So I'll use that right here. And as you can see, because we have defined types, I get this automatic auto completion, which allows me to retrieve a product or products. And this is the product entity response collection type and the product entity response type. Here in the GraphQL API documentation, you can see the exact type definitions and defined, defined types right here. They basically have a data attribute and a meta, meta attribute for the collection. So based on that, I want to retrieve products, or I want multiple products. And again, curly, curly braces. Here in the type definition, let me zoom in, we can see that the other two properties, this is the collection type, are data and metadata. I want the data, of course. I get out of completion again, and we go in depth. And here in the data, uh, we are we have the same structure with it in the REST for API. So we have the ID in the root, and then we have attributes where all of our custom fields are. So under attributes, I have here we go title, and I should have price. My two fields right here. If I go to my content manager, now this query should return my three items with their ID, title, and price. Let's test that real quick. I'll run the query. And on the right, I get the actual response. And we have an error. As you can see, GraphQL returns an array of errors. This is an expected error. It's forbidden. I'm unauthenticated. By default, if I go to settings, the user send permissions, plugin and roles. Public unauthenticated users don't have any permissions for products. For the demo, I will give unauthenticated users the permissions to do everything with the product type. You don't want to do that in production. In most cases, 99% of the cases, you would want to authenticate your API with an API key. So let's save this. And now if I rerun my query again, I don't get the unauthenticated error, I get my items exactly in the, in the way I requested them and with the fields I requested. If I remove the price, I will get only the title and the ID. I can remove any of these fields to get only the data I need for my specific client needs. This is the power of GraphQL queries. They are quite concise. And they allow you to customize the response basically to infinity. You can get any field you want. Now, here I can also retrieve a single product. To retrieve a single product, as you can imagine, I probably need to pass an ID or some identifier. So GraphQL has this syntax, which is similar to a function call. And here I get uh, some 
again, auto completion that I might want to retrieve a product by ID. So I'll use that. And this is the query language we use. I want to retrieve an ID, a product with ID two, for example, which is this smartphone. So let's query that. And I get my smartphone right here. Quite concise and easy. Of course, you might want to do filters on the collection type. Filters, sorting, other powerful things. So products, if I retrieve them like this, I'll get all products. I can again use this function like syntax to apply certain filters. If I go to the documentation, here we have filters first and sorting second. So we can see how we can apply filters. Queries, this is specifically for queries, which is a, we are working with a query right now. We specify the filters object, then field operator value. And we have a big list of operators. These are very basic operators and they include pretty much everything you need from equality and comparison to string, uh, to contains uh, queries, starts with, ends with, and basic logical operators. So let's do something. I would want to filter a couple of ways. Basically, I will specify the field here. Let's filter by title. And I want title to be equal to smartphone, for example. All right, works exactly as expected. Of course, I can, for example, use contains also. Let's see titles that contain the word smart, which is smartphone and smartwatch. Again, it works. We can also filter numeric fields like price. Let's say greater than, we had that here, greater than or equal. Let's do greater than price that is greater than 500, for example. We query that, we get smartphone and laptop. This is because if I do greater than 100, we'll see that smartwatch is 350. So these filters are quite powerful because you have quite a comprehensive list of them and um, they are very useful for retrieval of collections. Of course, next up in the documentation, we see that we also, uh, GraphQL, the Graph, Strapi GraphQL API also supports sorting, which is quite simple. We pass sort and then a string with the field name and the sending or sending. So let's test that real quick. I will remove the filter and I'll do sort. And here we do a simple string. I will sort, let's say by first ID descending because the default sort is by ID ascending. So this should reverse them three to one. Let's test exactly as, as expected. I can also, for example, do title ascending, which should order them title is uppercase. As you can see, the error messages are quite good here in the API. Uh, so title is uppercase and it orders them alphabetically. Laptop, smartphone and smartwatch, which is the expected behavior. The last option we have for queries is are the pagination methods, which are very useful. Here's how you can use them. Pagination, page and page size, quite standard page and page size or limit and offset pagination. For this example, I have only three products. So I'll set page size to two so that we have two pages and pay, retrieve page one, which again returns laptop and smartphone. If I retrieve page two, works exactly as expected. We have an alternative tax. Uh, again, we have the limit and offset properties, which are renamed to start and limit. And these are the supported query operations by the GraphQL API. Now let's talk about mutations and I'll start with creation. Here in the, uh, in the documentation, we have queries, mutations, and the filter sorting and paginations last. So let's go back to the mutations and create an item. Here in the Strapi documentation, the article type is used in Strapi. So here is basically how you do a mutation. You specify a mutation right now. We're doing a query, which is unspecified right here, because that's a capability of GraphQL. You can use the shorthand syntax, and then you can name this some way, in some way, for example, retrieve products. When you do a mutation, you have to specify that you're doing a mutation. I'll copy this so that we can 
start from a placeholder without typing too much. So I will create a mutation and call it create product in my case. And the mutation will be create product. This is a defined mutation, so I'll get auto completion. And here we have to pass the actual data of the newly created product. So we have a title field and I'll call my new product, new product, and I'll give it a price. This one, for example. Now the next items inside of the GraphQL query define what the successful execution of this mutation should return about the new product. And I will keep that. I will actually retrieve both the title and the price of the newly created product if it was created successfully. Let's run this query. I get a new product with ID 4, its name and price. If I go to my GraphQL instance and the content manager, I get my new product successfully created as expected. So let's now do an update. Again, similar syntax of the mutation. The mutation is update article. So I'll just go to the playground and type it. My mutation will be called update product. If I type the update product mutation, I get out of completion. And now again, I have to specify the data. First, the ID this time of the product. I'll go, I'll update product four, which is our newly created product. And the data, I will update the title to updated title. Let me fix the white spaces a bit for readability. And again, after that, I can specify a query, which will just return certain items. Let's again retrieve ID and all attributes. Actually, just title. I'm modifying only the title, not the price, so that should be fine. Let's see now. Here we get the expected success message, the returned item. If I refresh here, I have my updated title right here, as expected. And last is the delete product query. I'll just update this one to delete product. And I don't need to pass data, only the ID is enough. I want the same attributes to be returned here of the deleted product in case of success. And I get a successful message, only this part updated. If you didn't notice, if I refresh now, my product is deleted as expected. So this is how you install the Strapi GraphQL plugin, how you use it, and how you do the basic root operations for retrieval with filters, pagination, how you create, update, and delete items. The last part I want to talk about, so far we've been using this GraphQL playground. How do you use this in your actual project? Very useful, you can create an, uh, right here is the, what's useful is the copy curl button right here. So you can copy the basic curl HTTP request I will open this code to demonstrate. Here's what this will copy, basically. An HTTP curl request to the GraphQL endpoint. It's basically a post request and with uh, a couple of headers and the actual data sends the GraphQL query to the API. And you will get the same response from that HTTP request. I wouldn't recommend, you can of course convert this curl command to an HTTP request, depending on the framework you're using on your client. You can use GraphQL with any client, like a web application with React or a Java desktop app or whatever, doesn't matter. Anything that can send HTTP requests. The point is you usually wouldn't want to do that. There are specific clients, GraphQL clients, uh, like a Apollo client, for example, or also Relay, which you can use. Depending on your um, application, you can use multiple clients that allow you to write queries and will abstract away the HTTP request for you. But the clients will depend heavily on the front-end application you are using. The Strapi GraphQL plugin will, of course, support any front-end client for GraphQL. With this, I will wrap today's video. If you enjoy the content, don't forget to subscribe to get notified when another video is released. Take care.